Hi, Story Fran. How are you? I'm doing well. I had a productive day, which is always good. Last time we were together, I said that I had a book I wanted to read with you that had a certain character about to start school. Can you guess what kind of character that might be? I'll give you a hint. They're big and fuzzy and sweet. It's not a bear. If I didn't know, I would have probably guessed a bear. No, not a llama or a lion. It's a great big monster, but a very sweet monster. I'll, sh I'll show you the cover. His name is Maurice. Maurice the Unbeastly is the title of the book. And I'll tell you, when I found it, I was relieved because I had been reading picture books for hours and just not finding anything I liked. So, after I read it, it felt like a home run. So, why don't we read it together now and enjoy our story time. Maurice the Unbeastly by Amy Dixon Illustrated by Carl James Mountford Maurice was not like other beasts. His voice was as sweet and refreshing as dandelion lemonade on a hot day. He preferred his snacks green and organic. And he was ridiculously photogenic. Mama and Papa Beast were concerned. Beasts roar, said Mama, and destroy, bellowed Papa. You must learn to be less civilized, Mama said. We are enrolling you at the Abominable Academy for Brutish Beasts. Maurice munched quietly on his kale kebab and mauled this over. He was a beast. He was supposed to be fierce and ugly and gruff. He didn't want to be a gargantuan failure. So he tidied up his room packed up his alfalfa fritters and headed off to the Abominable Academy for Brutish Beasts. Our first lesson, growled the headmaster, will be the frightening roar. The beasts responded in a chorus of terrifying shouts except for Maurice, whose voice rose above the rest in a perfect high A. A note went home to Mama and Papa. Maurice's roar is dreadfully melodious and delightful to the ear. Lesson number two, the headmaster snarled, is messy meat eating. The beasts ripped and ravaged through the meat feast before them, except for Maurice, who placed a napkin in his lap and said, Excuse me, please, but is there a vegetarian option? Another note went home to Mama and Papa. Maurice is terribly neat and polite, and we had to confiscate his alfalfa fritters. Next, said the headmaster, we destroy. Each beast in the room 
crashed and crushed, wrecked and ruined, except for Maurice, who dashingly dodged and stylishly sidestepped the mayhem. You're much too light on your feet, the headmaster scolded. Just when Maurice thought it couldn't get any worse, picture day arrived. One by one, the beasts thundered through the line, their hideousness shattering camera lenses. Maurice was determined to get this one right. He growled and scowled. He snarled and howled. The photographer still captured the perfect glamour shot. One last note went home. If Maurice insists on continuing to smile, he will never progress. Maurice was beginning to feel as if the Abominable Academy for Brutish Beasts was a gargantuan mistake. Just then, a ruckus erupted in the classroom. An unidentified creature had infiltrated the Academy. One beast roared, but the creature just roared right back. Another beast bravely tried to catch it, but she stomped much too slowly. All the beasts quivered and quaked, except for Maurice, who sashayed to the left and flashed his winning smile. Here, creature, creature, he sang, the creature stopped and looked with big eyes at Maurice. Maurice pulled a hidden alfalfa fritter from his pocket and held it out. The other beasts watched in amazement as the creature bounded over to Maurice and curled up in his lap. Teach us this creature magic, the headmaster said. And so Maurice was named the official creature whisperer of the Abominable Academy for Brutish Beasts. He was a gargantuan success. His paper, Coaxing Creatures 101, Using the Beast's softer side won first prize in the school essay contest. He led a campaign to add kale to the lunch menu. And he started the Academy's first a cappella group, the Barbaritones. Maurice was definitely not like other beasts and thank goodness for that. That's sweet Maurice. When I started school, I learned quickly that the other kids seemed to like and dislike all sorts of things. But sometimes when I didn't like something, or if I did like something, that some of the other kids did not. Some of them said mean things that hurt my feelings. And I guess it was because they wanted me to like the things that they did. I remember one time our school librarian read three different books to our class. And after we were going to write down on a piece of paper which book 
we like best and then vote to see which book the class liked best. Well, I know the one I liked, but then one little girl I wanted to be friends with told me that all of her friends were going to vote for a book that I didn't really like. And she said, if I didn't vote for that book, that she wouldn't be my friend anymore. Well, I got scared and wanted to be her friend. So I ended up voting for a book I didn't like and it won and I felt terrible for not voting for the one that I did like. But now that I'm a grown up, as odd as that sometimes feels to say, I, I know what makes our world special and that's that each one of us is different. We can like and think and do and be many different things. And you get to decide if those things are helpful or hurtful. I, for one, think reading is helpful. And so is spending time with people you care about, even if it's through a phone or a computer, which is something I like to do if I can't be with that person, and both of us together, which in a way is sort of like what we do. But for now, I will say, till next time, from me to you. Bye for now.